the village book one of the village and the library this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by david wales the village and the library by george crabbe the village book one the subject proposed remarks upon pastoral poetry a tract of country near the coast described an impoverished borough snugglers and their assistants rude manners of the inhabitants ruinous effects of a high tide the village life more generally considered evils of it the youthful labourer the old man his soliloquy the parish workhouse its inhabitants the sick poor their apothecary the dying pauper the village priest the village life and every care that reigns o'er youthful peasants and declining swains what labour yields and what that labour past age in its hour of languor finds at last what form the real picture of the poor demand a song the muse can give no more fled are those times when in harmonious strains the rustic poet praised his native plains no shepherds now in smooth alternate verse their country's beauty or their nymphs rehearse yet still for these we frame the tender strain still in our lays fond choriodons complain and shepherds boys their amorous pains reveal the only pains alas they never feel on mincio's banks in caesar's bounteous reign if tityrus found the golden age again must sleepy bars the flattering dream prolong mechanic echoes of the mantuan song from truth and nature shall we widely stray where virgil not where fancy leads the way yes thus the muses sing of happy swains because the muses never knew their pains they boast their peasants pipes but peasants now resign their pipes and plod behind the plough and few amid the rural tribe have time to number syllables and play with rhyme save honest duck what son of verse could share the poet's rapture and the peasant's care or the great labours of the field degrade with the new peril of a poorer trade from this chief cause these idle praises spring that themes so easy few forbear to sing for no deep thought the trifling subjects ask to sing of shepherds is an easy task the happy youth assumes the common strain a nymph his mistress and himself a swain with no sad scenes he clouds his tuneful prayer but all to look like her is painted fair i grant indeed that fields and flocks have charms for him that grazes or for him that farms but when amid such pleasing scenes i trace the poor laborious natives of the place and see the midday sun with fervid ray on their bare heads and dewy temples play while some with feebler heads and fainter hearts deplore their fortune yet sustain their parts then shall i dare these real ills to hide in tinsel trappings of poetic pride no cast by fortune on a frowning coast which neither groves nor happy valleys boast where other cares than those the muse relates and other shepherds dwell with other mates by such examples taught i paint the cot as truth will paint it and as bards will not nor you ye poor of lettered scorn complain to you the smoothest song is smooth in vain or come by labour and bowed down by time feel you the barren flattery of a rhyme can poets soothe you when you pine for bread by winding myrtles round your ruined shed can their light tales your weighty griefs or power or glad with airy mirth the toilsome hour lo where the heath with withering brake grown o'er lends the light turf that warms the neighbouring poor from thence a length of burning sand appears where the thin harvest waves its withered ears 
rank weeds that every art and care defy reign o'er the land and rob the blighted rye there thistles stretch their prickly arms afar and to the ragged infant threaten war there poppies nodding mock the hope of toil there the blue uglas paints the sterile soil hardy and high above the slender sheaf the slimy mallow waves her silky leaf o'er the young shoot the charlock throws a shade and clasping tares cling round the sickly blade with mingled tents the rocky coasts abound and a sad splendour vainly shines around so looks the nymph whom wretched arts adorn betrayed by man then left for man to scorn whose cheek in vain assumes the mimic rose while her sad eyes the troubled breast disclose whose outward splendour is but folly's dress exposing most when most it gills distress here joyless roam a wild amphibious race with sullen woe displayed in every face who far from civil arts and social fly and scowl at strangers with suspicious eye here too the lawless merchant of the main draws from his plough the intoxicated swain want only claimed the labour of the day but vice now steals his nightly rest away where are the swains who daily labour done with rural games play down the setting sun who struck with matchless force the bounding ball or made the ponderous quoit obliquely fall while some huge ajax terrible and strong engaged some artful stripling of the throng and fell beneath him foiled while far around hoarse triumph rose and rocks returned the sound where now are these beneath yon cliff they stand to show the freighted pinnace where to land to load the ready steed with guilty haste to fly in terror o'er the pathless waste or when detected in their straggling course to foil their foes by cunning or by force or yielding part which equal knaves demand to gain a lawless passport through the land here wandering long amid these frowning fields i sought the simple life that nature yields rapine and wrong and fear usurped her place and a bold artful surly savage race who only skilled to take the finny tribe the yearly dinner or septennial bribe wait on the shore and as the waves run high on the tossed vessel bend their eager eye which to their coast directs its venturous way there o'er the ocean's miserable prey as on their neighbouring beach yon swallows stand and wait for favouring winds to leave the land while still for flight the ready wing is spread so waited i the favouring hour and fled fled from these shores where guilt and famine reign and cried ah hapless they who still remain who still remain to hear the ocean roar whose greedy waves devour the lessening shore till some fierce tide with more imperious sway sweeps the low hut and all it holds away when the sad tenant weeps from door to door and begs a poor protection from the poor but these are scenes where nature's niggard hand gave a spare portion to the famished land hers is the fault if here mankind complain of fruitless toil and labour spent in vain but yet in other scenes more fair in view where plenty smiles alas she smiles for few and those who taste not yet behold her store are as the slaves that dig the golden ore the wealth around them makes them doubly poor or will you deem them amply paid in health labour's fair child that languishes with wealth go then and see them rising with the sun through a long course of daily toil to run see them beneath the dog-star's raging heat when the knees tremble and the temples beat behold them leaning on their sighs look o'er the labour past and toils to come explore 
see them alternate suns and showers engage and hoard up aches and anguish for their age through fens and marshy moors their steps pursue when their warm pores imbibe the evening dew then own that labour may as fatal be to these thy slaves as thine excess to thee amid this tribe too oft a manly pride strives in strong toil the fainting heart to hide there may you see the youth of slender frame contend with weakness weariness and shame yet urged along and proudly loath to yield he strives to join his fellows of the field till long contending nature droops at last declining health rejects his poor repast his cheerless spouse the coming danger sees and mutual murmurs urge the slow disease yet grant them health tis not for us to tell though the head droops not that the heart is well or will you praise that homely healthy fare plenteous and plain that happy peasants share oh trifle not with wants you cannot feel nor mock the misery of a stinted meal homely not wholesome plain not plenteous such as you who praise would never deign to touch ye gentle souls who dream of rural ease whom the smooth stream and smoother sonnet please go if the peaceful cot your praises share go look within and ask if peace be there if peace be his that drooping weary sire or theirs that offspring round their feeble fire or hers that matron pale whose trembling hand turns on the wretched hearth the expiring brand nor yet can time itself obtain for these life's latest comforts due respect and ease for yonder see that hoary swain whose age can with no cares except his own engage who propped on that rude staff looks up to see the bare arms broken from the withering tree on which a boy he climbed the loftiest bough then his first joy but his sad emblem now he once was chief in all the rustic trade his steady hand the straightest furrow made full many a prize he won and still is proud to find the triumphs of his youth aloud a transient pleasure sparkles in his eyes he hears and smiles then thinks again and sighs for now he journeys to his grave in pain the rich disdain him nay the poor disdain alternate masters now their slave command urge the weak efforts of his feeble hand and when his age attempts its task in vain with ruthless taunts of lazy poor complain oft may you see him when he tends the sheep his winter charge beneath the hillock weep oft hear him murmur to the winds that blow o'er his white locks and bury them in snow when roused by rage and muttering in the morn he mends the broken hedge with icy thorn why do i live when i desire to be at once from life and life's long labor free like leaves in spring the young are blown away without the sorrows of a slow decay i like yon withered leaf remain behind nipped by the frost and shivering in the wind there it abides till younger buds come on as i now all my fellow swains are gone then from the rising generation thrust it falls like me unnoticed to the dust these fruitful fields these numerous flocks i see are others gain but killing cares to me to me the children of my youth are lords cool in their looks but hasty in their words wants of their own demand their care and who feels his own want and succors others too a lonely wretched man in pain i go none need my help and none relieve my woe then let my bones beneath the turf be laid and men forget the wretch they would not aid 
thus groans the old till by disease oppressed they taste a final woe and then they rest theirs is yon house that holds the parish poor whose walls of mud scarce bear the broken door there where the putrid vapors flagging play and the dull wheel hums doleful through the day there children dwell who know no parents care parents who know no children's love dwell there heartbroken matrons on their joyless bed forsaken wives and mothers never wed dejected widows with unheeded tears and crippled age with more than childhood fears the lame the blind and far the happiest they the moping idiot and the madman gay here too the sick their final doom receive here brought amid the scenes of grief to grieve where the loud groans from some sad chamber flow mixed with the clamours of the crowd below here sorrowing they each kindred sorrow scan and the cold charities of man to man whose laws indeed for ruined age provide and strong compulsion plucks the scrap from pride but still that scrap is bought with many a sigh and pride embitters what it can't deny say ye oppressed by some fantastic woes some jarring nerve that baffles your repose who press the downy couch while slaves advance with timid eye to read the distant glance who with sad prayers the weary doctor tease to name the nameless ever new disease who with mock patience dire complaints endure which real pain and that alone can cure how would ye bear in real pain to lie despise neglected left alone to die how would ye bear to draw your latest breath where all that's wretched paves the way for death such is that room which one rude beam divides and naked rafters form the sloping sides where the vile bands that bind the thatch are seen and lath and mud are all that lie between save one dull pane that coarsely patched gives way to the rude tempest yet excludes the day here on a matted flock with dust o'erspread the drooping wretch reclines his languid head for him no hand the cordial cup applies or wipes the tear that stagnates in his eyes no friends with soft discourse his pain beguile or promise hope till sickness wears a smile but soon a loud and hasty summons calls shakes the thin roof and echoes round the walls anon a figure enters quaintly neat all pride and business bustle and conceit with looks unaltered by these scenes of woe with speed that entering speaks his haste to go he bids the gazing throng around him fly and carries fate and physic in his eye a potent quack long versed in human ills who first insults the victim whom he kills whose murderous hand a drowsy bench protect and whose most tender mercy is neglect paid by the parish for attendance here he wears contempt upon his sapient sneer in haste he seeks the bed where misery lies impatience marked in his averted eyes and some habitual queries hurried o'er without reply he rushes on the door his drooping patient long inured to pain and long unheeded knows remonstrance vain he ceases now the feeble help to crave of man and silent sinks into the grave but ere his death some pious doubts arise some simple fears which bold bad men despise fain would he ask the parish priest to prove his title certain to the joys above for this he sends the murmuring nurse who calls the holy stranger to these dismal walls 
and doth not he the pious man appear he passing rich with forty pounds a year ah no a shepherd of a different stock and far unlike him feeds this little flock a jovial youth who thinks his sunday's task as much as god or man can fairly ask the rest he gives to loves and labours light to fields the morning and to feasts the night none better skilled the noisy pack to guide to urge their chase to cheer them or to chide a sportsman keen he shoots through half the day and skilled at whist devotes the night to play then while such honours bloom around his head shall he sit sadly by the sick man's bed to raise the hope he feels not or with zeal to combat fears that e'en the pious feel now once again the gloomy scene explore less gloomy now the bitter hour is o'er the man of many sorrows sighs no more up yonder hill beyond how sadly slow the bier moves winding from the vale below there lie the happy dead from trouble free and the glad parish pays the frugal fee no more o death thy victim starts to hear churchwarden stern or kingly overseer no more the farmer claims his humble bow thou art his lord the best of tyrants thou now to the church behold the mourners come sedately torpid and devoutly dumb the village children now their games suspend to see the bier that bears their ancient friend for he was one in all their idle sport and like a monarch ruled their little court the pliant bow he formed the flying ball the bat the wicket were his labours all him now they follow to his grave and stand silent and sad and gazing hand in hand while bending low their eager eyes explore the mingled relics of the parish poor the bell tolls late the moping owl flies round fear marks the flight and magnifies the sound the busy priest detained by weightier care defers his duty till the day of prayer and waiting long the crowd retired distressed to think a poor man's bones should lie unblessed end of the village book one the village book two of the village and the library by george crabbe this librivox recording is in the public domain the village book two there are found amid the evils of a laborious life some views of tranquillity and happiness the repose and pleasure of a summer sabbath interrupted by intoxication and dispute village detraction complaints of the squire the evening riots justice reasons for this unpleasant view of rustic life the effect it should have upon the lower classes and the higher these last have their peculiar distresses exemplified in the life and heroic death of lord robert manners concluding address to his grace the duke of rutland no longer truth though shown in verse disdain but own the village life a life of pain i too must yield that oft amid these woes are gleams of transient mirth and hours of sweet repose such as you find on yonder sportive green the squire's tall gate and churchway walk between where loitering stray a little tribe of friends on a fair sunday when the sermon ends then rural beaux their best attire put on to win their nymphs as other nymphs are won while those long wed go plain and by degrees like other husbands quit their care to please some of the sermon talk a sober crowd and loudly praise if it were preached aloud some on the labours of the weak look round feel their own worth and think their toil renowned while some whose labours to no renown extend are only pleased to find their labours end thus as their hours glide on with pleasure fraught 
their careful masters brood the painful thought much in their mind they murmur and lament that one fair day should be so idly spent and think that heaven deals hard to tithe their store and tax their time for preachers and the poor yet still ye humbler friends enjoy your hour this is your portion yet unclaimed of power this is heaven's gift to weary men oppressed and seems the type of their expected rest but yours alas are joys that soon decay frail joys begun and ended with the day or yet while day permits those joys to reign the village vices drive them from the plain see the stout churl in drunken fury great strike the bare bosom of his teeming mate his naked vices rude and unrefined exert their open empire o'er the mind but can we less the senseless rage despise because the savage acts without disguise yet here disguise the city's vice is seen and slander steals along and taints the green at her approach domestic peace is gone domestic broils at her approach come on she to the wife the husband's crime conveys she tells the husband when his consort strays her busy tongue through all the little state diffuses doubt suspicion and debate peace timorous goddess quits her old domain in sentiment and song content to reign nor are the nymphs that breathe the rural air so fair as cynthia's nor so chaste as fair these to the town afford each fresher face and the clown's trull receives the peer's embrace from whom should chance again convey her down the peer's disease in turn attacks the clown here to the squire or squire-like farmer talk how round their regions nightly pilferers walk how from their ponds the fish are born and all the ripening treasures from their lofty wall how meaner rivals in their sports delight just rich enough to claim a doubtful right who take a license round their fields to stray a mongrel race the poachers of the day and hark the riots of the green begin that sprang at first from yonder noisy inn what time the weekly pay was vanished all and the slow hostess scored the threatening wall what time they asked their friendly feast to close a final cup and that will make them foes when blows ensue that break the arm of toil and rustic battle ends the booby's broil save when to yonder hall they bend their way where the grave justice ends the grievous fray he who recites to keep the poor in awe the law's vast volume for he knows the law to him with anger or with shame repair the injured peasant and deluded fair lo at his throne the silent nymph appears frail by her shape but modest in her tears and while she stands abashed with conscious eye some favorite female of her judge glides by who views with scornful glance the strumpet's fate and thanks the stars that made her keeper great near her the swain about to bear for life one certain evil doubts twixt war and wife but while the faltering damsel takes her oath consents to wed and so secures them both yet why you ask these humble crimes relate why make the poor as guilty as the great to show the great those mightier sons of pride how near in vice the lowest are allied such are their natures and their passions such but these disguise too little those too much so shall the man of power and pleasure see in his own slave as vile a wretch as he in his luxurious lord the servant find his own low pleasures and degenerate mind and each in all the kindred vices trace of a poor blind bewildered erring race who a short time in varied fortune passed 
die and are equal in the dust at last and you ye poor who shall lament your fate forbear to envy those you call the great and know amid those blessings they possess they are like you the victims of distress while sloth with many a pang torments her slave fear waits on guilt and danger shakes the brave oh if in life one noble chief appears great in his name while blooming in his years born to enjoy whatever delights mankind and yet to all you feel or fear resigned who gave up joys and hopes to you unknown for pains and dangers greater than your own if such there be then let your murmur cease think think of him and take your lot in peace and such there was o oh, grief that checks our pride weeping we say there was for manners died beloved of heaven these humble lines forgive that sing of thee and thus aspire to live as the tall oak whose vigorous branches form an ample shade and brave the wildest storm high o'er the subject wood is seen to grow the guard and glory of the trees below till on its head the fiery bolt descends and o'er the plain the shattered trunk extends yet then it lies all wondrous as before and still the glory though the guard no more so thou when every virtue every grace rose in thy soul or shone within thy face when though the son of granby thou wert known less by thy father's glory than thy own when honour loved and gave thee every charm fire to thy eye and vigour to thy arm then from our lofty hopes and longing eyes fate and thy virtues called thee to the skies yet still we wonder at thy towering fame and losing thee still dwell upon thy name o oh, ever honoured ever valued say what verse can praise thee or what work repay yet verse in all we can thy worth repays nor trust the tardy zeal of future days honours for thee thy country shall prepare thee in their hearts the good the brave shall bear to deeds like thine shall noblest chiefs aspire the muse shall mourn thee and the world admire in future times when smit with glory's charms the untried youth first quits a father's arms oh be like him the weeping sire shall say like manners walk who walked in honour's way in danger foremost yet in death sedate oh be like him in all things but his fate if for that fate such public tears be shed that victory seems to die now thou art dead how shall a friend his nearer hope resign that friend a brother and whose soul was thine by what bold line shall we his grief express or by what soothing numbers make it less tis not i know the chiming of a song nor all the powers that to the muse belong words aptly culled and meanings well expressed can calm the sorrows of a wounded breast but virtue soother of the fiercest pains shall heal that bosom rutland where she reigns yet hard the task to heal the bleeding heart to bid the still recurring thoughts depart tame the fierce grief and stem the rising sigh and curb rebellious passion with reply calmly to dwell on all that pleased before and yet to know that all shall please no more o oh, glorious labour of the soul to save her captive powers and bravely mourn the brave to such these thoughts will lasting comfort give life is not measured by the time we live tis not an even course of threescore years a life of narrow views and paltry fears gray hairs and wrinkles and the cares they bring that take from death the terrors or the sting 
but tis the generous spirit mounting high above the world that native of the sky the noble spirit that in dangers brave calmly looks on or looks beyond the grave such manners was so he resigned his breath if in a glorious then a timely death cease then that grief and let those tears subside if passion rule us be that passion pride if reason reason bids us strive to raise our fallen hearts and be like him we praise or if affection still the soul subdue bring all his virtues all his worth in view and let affection find its comfort too for how can grief so deeply wound the heart when admiration claims so large a part grief is a foe expel him then thy soul let nobler thoughts the nearer views control oh make the age to come thy better care see other rutlands other granbys there and as thy thoughts through streaming ages glide see other heroes die as manners died and from their fate thy race shall nobler grow as trees shoot upwards that are pruned below or as old thames borne down with decent pride sees his young streams run warbling at his side though some by art cut off no longer run and some are lost beneath the summer sun yet the pure stream moves on and as it moves its power increases and its use improves while plenty round its spacious waves bestow still it flows on and shall for ever flow end of the village book two the library part one of the village and the library this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by david wales the village and the library by george crabbe the library part one the argument books afford consolation to the troubled mind by substituting a lighter kind of distress for its own they are productive of other advantages an author's hope of being known in distant times arrangement of the library size and form of the volumes the ancient folio clasped and chained fashion prevalent even in this place the mode of publishing in numbers pamphlets etc subjects of the different classes divinity controversy the friends of religion often more dangerous than her foes sceptical authors reason too much rejected by the former converts exclusively relied upon by the latter philosophy ascending through the scale of being to moral subjects books of medicine their variety variance and proneness to system the evil of this and the difficulty it causes farewell to this study law the increasing number of its volumes supposed happy state of man without laws progress of society historians their subjects dramatic authors tragic and comic ancient romances the captive heroine happiness in the perusal of such books why criticism apprehension of the author removed by the appearance of the genius of the place whose reasoning and admonition conclude the subject when the sad soul by care and grief oppressed looks round the world but looks in vain for rest when every object that appears in view partakes her gloom and seems dejected too where shall affliction from itself retire where fade away and placidly expire alas we fly to silent scenes in vain care blasts the honours of the flowery plain care veils in clouds the sun's meridian beam sighs through the grove and murmurs in the stream for when the soul is labouring in despair in vain the body breathes a purer air no storm-tossed sailor sighs for slumbering seas he dreads the tempest but invokes the breeze on the smooth mirror of the deep resides reflected woe 
and o'er unruffled tides the ghost of every former danger glides thus in the calms of life we only see a steadier image of our misery but lively gales and gently clouded skies disperse the sad reflections as they rise and busy thoughts and little cares avail to ease the mind when rest and reason fail when the dull thought by no designs employed dwells on the past or suffered or enjoyed we bleed anew in every former grief and joys departed furnish no relief not hope herself with all her flattering art can cure this stubborn sickness of the heart the soul disdains each comfort she prepares and anxious searches for congenial cares those lenient cares which with our own combined by mixed sensations ease the afflicted mind and steal our grief away and leave their own behind a lighter grief which feeling hearts endure without regret nor e'en demand a cure but what strange art what magic can dispose the troubled mind to change its native woes or lead us willing from ourselves to see others more wretched more undone than we this books can do nor this alone they give new views to life and teach us how to live they soothe the grieved the stubborn they chastise fools they admonish and confirm the wise their aid they yield to all they never shun the man of sorrow nor the wretch undone unlike the hard the selfish and the proud they fly not sullen from the suppliant crowd nor tell to various people various things but show to subjects what they show to kings come child of care to make thy soul serene approach the treasures of this tranquil scene survey the dome and as the doors unfold the soul's best cure in all her cares behold where mental wealth the poor in thought may find and mental physic the diseased in mind see here the balms that passion's wounds assuage see coolers here that damp the fire of rage here alteratives by slow degrees control the chronic habits of the sickly soul and round the heart and o'er the aching head mild opiates here their sober influence shed now bid thy soul man's busy scenes exclude and view composed this silent multitude silent they are but though deprived of sound here all the living languages abound here all that live no more preserved they lie in tombs that open to the curious eye blessed be the gracious power who taught mankind to stamp a lasting image of the mind beasts may convey and tuneful birds may sing their mutual feelings in the opening spring but man alone has skill and power to send the heart's warm dictates to the distant friend tis his alone to please instruct advise ages remote and nations yet to rise in sweet repose when labor's children sleep when joy forgets to smile and care to weep when passion slumbers in the lover's breast and fear and guilt partake the balm of rest why then denies the studious man to share man's common good who feels his common care because the hope is his that bids him fly night's soft repose and sleep's mild power defy that after ages may repeat his praise and fame's fair meed be his for length of days delightful prospect when we leave behind a worthy offspring of the fruitful mind which born and nursed through many an anxious day shall all our labor all our care repay yet all are not these births of noble kind not all the children of a vigorous mind but where the wisest should alone preside the weak would rule us and the blind would guide nay man's best efforts taste of man and show the poor and troubled source from which they flow where most he triumphs we his wants perceive and for his weakness in his wisdom grieve 
but though imperfect all yet wisdom loves this seat serene and virtue's self approves here come the grieved a change of thought to find the curious here to feed a craving mind here the devout their peaceful temple choose and here the poet meets his favoring muse with awe around these silent walks i tread these are the lasting mansions of the dead the dead methinks a thousand tongues reply these are the tombs of such as cannot die crowned with eternal fame they sit sublime and laugh at all the little strife of time hail then immortals ye who shine above each in his sphere the literary jove and ye the common people of these skies a humbler crowd of nameless deities whether tis yours to lead the willing mind through history's mazes and the turnings find or whether led by science ye retire lost and bewildered in the vast desire whether the muse invites you to her bowers and crowns your placid brows with living flowers or godlike wisdom teaches you to show the noblest road to happiness below or men and manners prompt the easy page to mark the flying follies of the age whatever good ye boast that good impart inform the head and rectify the heart lo all in silence all in order stand and mighty folios first a lordly band then quartos their well-ordered ranks maintain and light octavos fill a spacious plain see yonder ranged in more frequented rows a humbler band of duodecimos while undistinguished trifles swell the scene the last new play and frittered magazine thus tis in life where first the proud the great in leagued assembly keep their cumbrous state heavy and huge they fill the world with dread are much admired and are but little read the commons next a middle rank are found professions fruitful pour their offspring round reasoners and wits are next their place allowed and last of vulgar tribes a countless crowd first let us view the form the size the dress for these the manners nay the mind express that weight of wood with leathern coat o'erlaid those ample clasps of solid metal made the close-pressed leaves unclosed for many an age the dull red edgings of the well-filled page on the broad back the stubborn ridges rolled where yet the title stands in tarnished gold these all a sage and labored work proclaim a painful candidate for lasting fame no idle wit no trifling verse can lurk in the deep bosom of that mighty work no playful thoughts degrade the solemn style nor one light sentence claims a transient smile hence in these times untouched the pages lie and slumber out their immortality they had their day when after all his toil his morning study and his midnight oil at length an author's one great work appeared by patient hope and length of days endeared expecting nations hailed it from the press poetic friends prefixed each kind address princes and kings received the ponderous gift and ladies read the work they could not lift fashion though folly's child and guide of fools ruled e'en the wisest and in learning rules from crowds and courts to wisdom's seat she goes and reigns triumphant o'er her mother's foes for lo these favorites of the ancient mode lie all neglected like the birthday ode ah needless now this weight of massy chain safe in themselves the once loved works remain no readers now invade their still retreat none try to steal them from their parent seat like ancient beauties they may now discard chains bolts and locks and lie without a guard our patient fathers trifling themes laid by and rolled o'er labored works the attentive eye 
page after page the much enduring men explored the deeps and shallows of the pen till every former note and comment known they marked the spacious margin with their own minute corrections proved their studious care the little index pointing told us where and many an emendation showed the age looked far beyond the rubric title page our nicer palates lighter labors seek ployed with a folio number once a week bibles with cuts and comments thus go down e'en light voltaire is numbered through the town thus physic flies abroad and thus the law from men of study and from men of straw abstracts abridgments please the fickle times pamphlets and plays and politics and rhymes but though to write be now a task of ease the task is hard by manly arts to please when all our weakness is exposed to view and half our judges are our rivals too amid these works on which the eager eye delights to fix or glides reluctant by when all combined their decent pomp display where shall we first our early offering pay to thee divinity to thee the light and guide of mortals through their mental night by whom we learn our hopes and fears to guide to bear with pain and to contend with pride when grieved to pray when injured to forgive and with the world in charity to live not truths like these inspired that numerous race whose pious labors fill this ample space but questions nice where doubt on doubt arose awaked to war the long contending foes for dubious meanings learned polemic strove and wars on faith prevented works of love and brands of discords far around were hurled and holy wrath inflamed a sinful world dull though impatient peevish though devout with wit disgusting and despised without saints in design in execution men peace in their looks and vengeance in their pen methinks i see and sicken at the sight spirits of spleen from yonder pile alight spirits who prompted every damning page with pontiff pride and still increasing rage lo how they stretch their gloomy wings around and lash with furious strokes the trembling ground they pray they fight they murder and they weep wolves in their vengeance in their manners sheep too well they act the prophet's fatal part denouncing evil with a zealous heart and each like jonah is displeased if god repent his anger or withhold his rod but here the dormant fury rests unsought and zeal sleeps soundly by the foes she fought here all the rage of controversy ends and rival zealots rest like bosom friends an athanasian here in deep repose sleeps with the fiercest of his arian foes socinians here with calvinists abide and thin partitions angry chiefs divide here wily jesuits simple quakers meet and bellarmine has rest at luther's feet great authors for the church's glory fired are for the church's peace to rest retired and close beside a mystic maudlin race lie a crumbs of comfort for the babes of grace against her foes religion well defends her sacred truths but often fears her friends if learned their pride if weak their zeal she dreads and their hearts weakness who have soundest heads but most she fears the controversial pen the holy strife of disputatious men who the blessed gospel's peaceful page explore only to fight against its precepts more near to these seats behold yon slender frames all closely filled and marked with modern names where no fair science ever shows her face few sparks of genius and no spark of grace there skeptics rest a still increasing throng and stretch their widening wings ten thousand strong 
some in close fight their dubious claims maintain some skirmish lightly fly and fight again coldly profane and impiously gay their end the same though various in their way when first religion came to bless the land her friends were then a firm believing band to doubt was then to plunge in guilt extreme and all was gospel that a monk could dream insulted reason fled the grovelling soul for fear to guide and visions to control but now when reason has resumed her throne she in her turn demands to reign alone rejecting all that lies beyond her view and being judge will be a witness too insulted faith then leaves the doubtful mind to seek for truth without a power to find ah when will both in friendly beams unite and pour on erring man resistless light next to the seats well stored with works divine an ample space philosophy is thine our reason's guide by whose assisting light we trace the moral bounds of wrong and right our guide through nature from the sterile clay to the bright orbs of yon celestial way tis thine the great the golden chain to trace which runs through all connecting race with race save where those puzzling stubborn links remain which thy inferior light pursues in vain how vice and virtue in the soul contend how widely differ yet how nearly blend what various passions war on either part and now confirm now melt the yielding heart how fancy loves around the world to stray while judgment slowly picks his sober way the stores of memory and the flight sublime of genius bound by neither space nor time all these divine philosophy explores till lost in awe she wonders and adores from these descending to the earth she turns and matter in its various forms discerns she parts the beamy light with skill profound meets the thin air and weighs the flying sound tis hers the lightning from the clouds to call and teach the fiery mischief where to fall yet more her volumes teach on these we look as abstracts drawn from nature's larger book here first described the torpid earth appears and next the vegetable robe it wears where flowery tribes in valleys fields and groves nurse the still flame and feed the silent loves loves where no grief nor joy nor bliss nor pain warm the glad heart or vex the laboring brain but as the green blood moves along the blade the bed of flora on the branch is made where without passion love instinctive lives and gives new life unconscious that it gives advancing still in nature's maze we trace in dens and burning plains her savage race with those tame tribes who on their lord attend and find in man a master and a friend man crowns the scene a world of wonders new a moral world that well demands our view this world is here for of more lofty kind these neighboring volumes reason on the mind they paint the state of man ere yet endued with knowledge man poor ignorant and rude then as his state improves their pages swell and all its cares and all its comforts tell here we behold how inexperience buys at little price the wisdom of the wise without the troubles of an active state without the cares and dangers of the great without the miseries of the poor we know what wisdom wealth and poverty bestow we see how reason calms the raging mind and how contending passions urge mankind some won by virtue glow with sacred fire some lured by vice indulge the low desire while others won by either now pursue the guilty chase now keep the good in view 
forever wretched with themselves at strife they lead a puzzled vexed uncertain life for transient vice bequeaths a lingering pain which transient virtue seeks to cure in vain whilst thus engaged high views enlarge the soul new interests draw new principles control nor thus the soul alone resigns her grief but here the tortured body finds relief for see where yonder sage arachne shapes her subtle gin that not a fly escapes there physic fills the space and far around pile above pile her learned works abound glorious their aim to ease the laboring heart to war with death and stop his flying dart to trace the source where the fierce contest grew and life's short lease on easier terms renew to calm the frenzy of the burning brain to heal the tortures of imploring pain or when more powerful ills all efforts brave to ease the victim no device can save and smooth the stormy passage to the grave but man who knows no good unmixed and pure oft finds a poison where he sought a cure for grave deceivers lodge their labors here and cloud the science they pretend to clear scourges for sin the solemn tribe are sent like fire and storms they call us to repent but storms subside and fires forget to rage these are eternal scourge of the age tis not enough that each terrific hand spreads desolations round a guilty land but trained to ill and hardened by its crimes their pen relentless kills through future times say ye who search these records of the dead who read huge works to boast what ye have read can all the real knowledge ye possess or those if such there are who more than guess atone for each impostor's wild mistakes and mend the blunders pride or folly makes what thought so wild what airy dream so light that will not prompt a theorist to write what art so prevalent what proof so strong that will convince him his attempt is wrong one in the solids finds each lurking ill nor grants the passive fluids power to kill a learned friend some subtler reason brings absolves the channels but condemns their springs the subtle nerves that shun the doctor's eye escape no more his subtler theory the vital heat that warms the laboring heart lends a fair system to these sons of art the vital air a pure and subtle stream serves a foundation for an airy scheme assists the doctor and supports his dream some have their favorite ills and each disease is but a younger branch that kills from these one to the gout contracts all human pain he views it raging in the frantic brain finds it in fevers all his efforts mar and sees it lurking in the cold catarrh bilious by some by others nervous seen rage the fantastic demons of the spleen and every symptoms of the strange disease with every system of the sage agrees ye frigid tribe on whom i wasted long the tedious hours and ne'er indulged in song ye first seducers of my easy heart who promised knowledge ye could not impart ye dull deluders truth's destructive foes ye sons of fiction clad in stupid prose ye treacherous leaders who yourselves in doubt light up false fires and send us far about still may yon spider round your pages spin subtle and slow her emblematic gin buried in dust and lost in silence dwell most potent grave and reverend friends farewell end of the library part one the library part two of the village and the library by george crabbe 
This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Library, Part Two. Near these, and where the setting sun displays through the dim window his departing rays, and gilds yon columns there on either side, the huge abridgments of the law abide fruitful as vice the dread correctors stand and spread their guardian terrors round the land yet as the best that human care can do is mixed with error oft with evil too skilled in deceit and practised to evade knaves stand secure for whom these laws were made and justice vainly each expedient tries while art eludes it or while power defies o oh, happy age the youthful poet sings when the free nations knew not laws nor kings when all were blessed to share a common store and none were proud of wealth for none were poor no wars nor tumults vexed each still domain no thirst of empire no desire of gain no proud great man nor one who would be great drove modest merit from its proper state nor into distant climes would avarice roam to fetch delights for luxury at home bound by no ties which kept the soul in awe they dwelt at liberty and love was law mistaken youth each nation first was rude each man a cheerless son of solitude to whom no joys of social life were known none felt a care that was not all his own or in some languid clime his abject soul bowed to a little tyrant's stern control a slave with slaves his monarch's throne he raised and in a rude song his ruder idol praised the meaner cares of life were all he knew bounded his pleasures and his wishes few but when by slow degrees the arts arose and science awakened from her long repose when commerce rising from the bed of ease ran round the land and pointed to the seas when emulation born with jealous eye and avarice lent their spurs to industry then one by one the numerous laws were made those to control and these to succour trade to curb the insolence of rude command to snatch the victim from the usurer's hand to awe the bold to yield the wronged redress and feed the poor with luxury's excess like some vast flood unbounded fierce and strong his nature leads ungoverned man along like mighty bulwarks made to stem that tide the laws are formed and placed on every side whene'er it breaks the bound by these decreed new statutes rise and stronger laws succeed more and more gentle grows the dying stream more and more strong the rising bulwarks seem till like a miner working sure and slow luxury creeps on and ruins all below the basis sinks the ample piles decay the stately fabric shakes and falls away primeval want and ignorance come on but freedom that exalts the savage state is gone next history ranks there full in front she lies and every nation her dread tale supplies yet history has her doubts and every age with skeptic queries marks the passing page records of old nor later date are clear too distant those and these are placed too near there time conceals the objects from our view here our own passions and a writer's too yet in these volumes see how states arose guarded by virtue from surrounding foes their virtue lost and of their triumphs vain lo how they sunk to slavery again satiate with power of fame and wealth possessed a nation grows too glorious to be blessed conspicuous maid she stands the mark of all and foes join foes to triumph in her fall thus speaks the page that paints ambition's race the monarch's pride his glory his disgrace 
the headlong course that maddening heroes run how soon triumphant and how soon undone how slaves turned tyrants offer crowns to sail and each fallen nation's melancholy tale lo where of late the book of martyrs stood old pious tracts and bibles bound in wood there such the taste of our degenerate age stand the profane delusions of the stage yet virtue owns the tragic muse a friend fable her means morality her end for this she rules all passions in their turns and now the bosom bleeds and now it burns pity with weeping eye surveys her bowl her anger swells her terror chills the soul she makes the vile to virtue yield applause and own her sceptre while they break her laws for vice in others is abhorred of all and villains triumph when the worthless fall not thus her sister comedy prevails who shoots at folly for her arrow fails folly by dullness armed eludes the wound and harmless sees the feathered shafts rebound unhurt she stands applauds the archer's skill laughs at her malice and is folly still yet well the muse portrays in fancied scenes what pride will stoop to what profession means how formal fools the farce of state applaud how caution watches at the lips of fraud the wordy variance of domestic life the tyrant husband the retorting wife the snares for innocence the lie of trade and the smooth tongue's habitual masquerade with her the virtues too obtain a place each gentle passion each becoming grace the social joy in life's securer road its easy pleasure its substantial good the happy thought that conscious virtue gives and all that ought to live and all that lives but who are these methinks a noble mien and awful grandeur in their form are seen now in disgrace what though by time is spread polluting dust o'er every reverend head what though beneath yon gilded tribe they lie and dull observers pass insulting by forbid it shame forbid it decent awe what seems so grave should no attention draw come let us then with reverend step advance and greet the ancient worthies of romance hence ye profane i feel a former dread a thousand visions float around my head hark hollow blasts through empty courts resound and shadowy forms with staring eyes stalk round see moats and bridges walls and castles rise ghosts fairies demons dance before our eyes lo magic verse inscribed on golden gate and bloody hand that beckons on to fate and who art thou thou little page unfold say doth thy lord my claribel withhold go tell him straight sir knight thou must resign the captive's queen for claribel is mine away he flies and now for bloody deeds black suits of armour masks and foaming steeds the giant falls his recreant throat i seize and from his corslet take the massy keys dukes lords and knights in long procession move released from bondage with my virgin love she comes she comes in all the charms of youth unequalled love and unsuspected truth ah happy he who thus in magic themes o'er worlds bewitched in earlier rapture dreams where wild enchantment waves her potent wand and fancy's beauties fill her fairyland where doubtless objects strange desires excite and fear and ignorance afford delight but lost forever lost to me these joys which reason scatters and which time destroys too dearly bought maturer judgment calls my busy mind from tales and madrigals my doughty giants all are slain or fled and all my knights blue green and yellow dead no more the midnight's fairy tribe i view 
all in the merry moonshine tippling dew e'en the last lingering fiction of the brain the churchyard ghost is now at rest again and all these wayward wanderings of my youth fly reason's power and shun the light of truth with fiction then does real joy reside and is our reason the delusive guide is it then right to dream the sirens sing or mount enraptured on the dragon's wing no tis the infant mind to care unknown that makes the imagined paradise its own soon as reflections in the bosom rise light slumbers vanish from the clouded eyes the tear and smile that once together rose are then divorced the head and heart are foes enchantment bows to wisdom's serious plan and pain and prudence make and mar the man while thus of power and fancied empire vain with various thoughts my mind i entertain while books my slaves with tyrant hand i seize pleased with the pride that will not let them please sudden i find terrific thoughts arise and sympathetic sorrow fills my eyes for lo while yet my heart admits the wound i see the critic army ranged around foes to our race if ever ye have known a father's fears for offspring of your own if ever smiling o'er a lucky line ye thought the sudden sentiment divine then paused and doubted and then tired of doubt with rage as sudden dashed the stanza out if after fearing much and pausing long ye ventured on the world your labored song and from the crusty critics of those days implored the feeble tribute of their praise remember now the fears that moved you then and spite of truth let mercy guide your pen what ventrous race are ours what mighty foes lie waiting all around them to oppose what treacherous friends betray them to the fight what dangers threaten them yet still they write a hapless tribe to every evil born whom villains hate and fools affect to scorn strangers they come amid a world of woe and taste the largest portion ere they go pensive i spoke and cast mine eyes around the roof methought returned a solemn sound each column seemed to shake and clouds like smoke from dusty piles and ancient volumes broke gathering above like mists condensed they seem exhaled in summer from the rushy stream like flowing robes they now appear and twine round the large members of a form divine his silver beard that swept his aged breast his piercing eye that inward light expressed were seen but clouds and darkness veiled the rest fear chilled my heart to one of mortal race how awful seemed the genius of the place so in cimmerian shores ulysses saw his parents shade and shrunk in pious awe like him i stood and wrapped in thought profound when from the pitying power broke forth a solemn sound care lives with all no rules no precepts save the wise from woe no fortitude the brave grief is to man as certain as the grave tempests and storms in life's whole progress rise and hope shines dimly through o'er clouded skies some drops of comfort on the favored fall but showers of sorrow are the lot of all partial to talents then shall heaven withdraw the afflicting rod or break the general law shall he who soars inspired by loftier views life's little cares and little pains refuse shall he not rather feel a double share of mortal woe when doubly armed to bear hard is his fate who builds his peace of mind on the precarious mercy of mankind who hopes for wild and visionary things and mounts o'er unknown seas with ventrous wings but as of various evils that befall the human race some portion goes to all 
to him perhaps the milder lots assigned who feels his consolation in his mind and locked within his bosom bears about a mental charm for every care without e'en in the pangs of each domestic grief or health or vigorous hope affords relief and every wound the tortured bosom feels or virtue bears or some preserver heals some generous friend of ample power possessed some feeling heart that bleeds for the distressed some breast that glows with virtue all divine some noble rutland misery's friend and thine nor say the muse's song the poet's pen merit the scorn they meet from little men with cautious freedom if the numbers flow not wildly high nor pitifully low if vice alone their honest aims oppose why so ashamed their friends so loud their foes happy for men in every age and clime if all the sons of vision dealt in rhyme go on then son of vision still pursue thy airy dreams the world is dreaming too ambition's lofty views the pomp of state the pride of wealth the splendor of the great stripped of their mask their cares and troubles known are visions far less happy than thy own go on and while the sons of care complain be wisely gay and innocently vain while serious souls are by their fears undone blow sportive bladders in the beamy sun and call them worlds and bid the greatest show more radiant colors in their worlds below then as they break the slaves of care remove and tell them such are all the toys they love end of the library part two end of the village and the library by george crabbe